Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is gonna be a skincare haul update and I have a whole bucket of different skincare products to talk about. I'm gonna to try to go through them as quickly as I can because there's a whole ton of them, but I just wanted to go over some of the products that I've purchased since my last haul update, which was way back in October. So I got some things in November, December, and January that I wanna talk about and just let you guys know how they've been working out for me lately. I've been trying to keep up with the makeup reviews as much as I can. I know there are still definitely some products you guys requested reviews on that I haven't done yet, but I just feel like I haven't talked about skincare in so long and I keep getting questions about whether I like certain products or not. So I just want to kind of address all of those in today's video. So why don't we go ahead and just jump right in and I'm going to start out with cleansing balms. So I purchased two of them back in November. The first one is from the brand Found and this is a brand that is available exclusively at Walmart. It's very affordable and they had sent this to me in a PR package back then and I also had picked up the Pond's cleansing balm that I saw at CVS one day. So between these two I have to say I don't really like either one of them. Um, first the Found one. This one is so greasy. It's the greasiest cleansing balm I have ever used in my life. It's coconut oil based and coconut oil can clog pores it is considered comedogenic even aside from that even if I didn't have issues with coconut oil it's just too greasy for me it feels like I'm slathering butter on my face and even when I go in with a second cleanser and try to remove this it's really really stubborn and hard to remove and my skin just felt like it had a layer of grease on it all day which is not something that I really want I also found that it really didn't remove makeup as well as it could have I still did have some mascara like down in my lower lash line the next day so I really was not a fan of this I tried it twice and I just couldn't deal with it anymore so I'm definitely throwing that one away and then the Pond's Cleansing Balm, this one is okay. I feel like it's very similar to a lot of other cleansing balms that are on the market. It's just that I'm not normally a fan of cleansing balms because they require you to do that double cleanse and that second step. And I am so lazy at night, especially. I'm tired, I wanna go to bed. I just wanna rinse off my makeup as quick as I possibly can. I don't wanna have to do that second step. This one is actually mineral oil based. And I know there's a lot of like negativity around mineral oil, but it's honestly not that bad for your skin. When it's used in a moisturizer especially, it really helps to lock down the moisture in your skin and prevent it from escaping. So I think it's a great option if you have a compromised skin barrier, if you have really dry skin like I do. But in a cleansing balm, it does give it that greasy feel and it is very hard to remove. So even though this broke down makeup really well for me, I did have to go in and double cleanse to remove this and it was just another second step. And if you don't double cleanse and you just leave this sort of film on your skin, it's gonna make it really difficult for those skincare products that you apply next to penetrate into your skin. So you really, really wanna remove this all the way to get rid of that mineral oil barrier so that your other skincare products can go in. So that's the main reason that I don't like this one, but if you are a fan of traditional cleansing balms and you do a double cleanse anyway, I think you'll probably really like this. I thought it was really effective at removing makeup. Um, my favorite personally is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Makeup for a one-step cleanse because even though this is a cleansing balm, it dissolves all the makeup and when you splash water on your face, it rinses away really, really clean and just leaves your skin feeling soft. I also love the Colleen Rothschild Cleansing Balm. This one actually will leave a little bit of film on your face if you don't use the muslin cloth that it comes with to remove it, but it's still quicker for me than using a double step and having to go in with a second cleanser. So these two are just my personal choices if you like wanna speed things up at night and get to bed in a hurry. Another product that I got at CVS back in November was the Aveeno Positively Radiant Max Glow Infusion Drops. Now these claim to kind of even out your skin tone, make your skin look brighter, give you like this beautiful glow, and I honestly didn't really notice it doing anything Thing for my skin other than just adding a nice layer of moisture. It's a very thin consistency, kind of like I guess an essence or a serum would be. It's just really light. It makes my skin feel really soft and really smooth. But looking at the ingredient list, the main two ingredients are water and glycerin, followed by some silicones and some skin conditioning ingredients. And those ingredients that they said would help to brighten up your skin, like the soybean and the kiwi, are all the way down at the very bottom of the list. So I doubt that there's really enough of those ingredients in the formula to make a huge impact. For me, this was just more like an extra layer of moisture for my skin, which is nice because I do have dry skin, but I'm already layering so many different types of serums and anti-aging products before my moisturizer. I really don't see a lot of room in my routine for this. I guess I was just hoping that it was gonna add some sort of noticeable glow to my skin, but I really didn't see that with this. So it's a nice product if you just wanna add a little bit of extra moisture, but I wouldn't expect it to do too much more than that. 
Um, another serum that I've been loving lately though is the Tatcha Violet C Brightening Serum. I've been using this now for about a month, I would say, and it's just really brightened up my skin. I actually have been taking before and after photos, so I'm gonna put those up on the screen so that you can see um, on the left, we have the before, and you can see that I do have some sunspots, dark spots, freckling, whatever you want to call it. Um, and on the right-hand side of the screen, this was after about two and a half weeks of using this, and I feel like my skin just looks brighter overall. It was taken in the same lighting in my bathroom in the same exact spot, so I really saw a difference in how much brighter my skin looks, and those spots are starting to fade a little bit. So even though this is really expensive, I feel like it is doing something, so I'm excited to continue using this I want to do maybe an update on it in another month or so and see if it does anything further but I just wanted to give you a quick update on this because I did get some questions on it um, another thing I've been loving lately this is actually a body product is the ultra repair body scrub from first aid beauty I had gotten this originally in a set that was on a QVC um, today special value and now they sell this individually so I wanted to share it because I think it's an amazing body scrub it's not like one of those ones that comes in a jar that has all the oils mixed in this one is just a straight scrub but the grains are really really tiny so it's almost like a microdermabrasion type of experience it's really really effective and it also foams up on your skin so it's kind of like a scrub and cleanser in one I also love that it comes in a tube it's just so much handier than having to scoop out stuff out of a jar and in my shower we have a really narrow ledge so those jars don't always fit really nicely there and this does so I really love it for a variety of reasons but I just think it's a super effective scrub also because it doesn't have those heavy oils in it like some other ones do you can use this before self tanner and it's not going to hinder the self tanner from you know going into your skin like those oil based ones would so that's just another tip if you do use self tanner this one's not going to mess with that and then another body product I wasn't too crazy about is this Neutrogena Hydra Boost Whipped Body Balm. It feels really nice when you first apply it to your skin. It has like this kind of crazy like whipped velvety texture and it feels so nice going onto the skin. It almost feels cushiony, kind of like a primer, but I just found that it wasn't great at hydrating my skin. I just felt really dried out afterwards. And I also am not crazy about the scent. It has this really kind of aquatic, fresh scent, but it's not really my cup of tea, so I wasn't a fan of that. But I think the main thing is that this has hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant, which draws water from the air into your skin. And if you live in a really dry climate like I do, you have the heat running all the time, if there is no moisture in the air for it to draw from, it'll draw from the moisture in your skin. So hyaluronic acid can work against you if you live in a really dry climate. And I've learned that the hard way after trying so many hyaluronic acid products that are claiming to like infuse all this moisture into your skin and they just were not working for me. And I'm like, my skin feels drier than ever. What is going on? So I can only use hyaluronic acid more in the summertime when there's a lot of moisture in the air. But right now I'm staying far, far away from them. So this one is just not working out for me. And then next I want to talk about three different oils that I've been trying lately that all have cannabis sativa extract or CBD oil in them. And this is a really hot ingredient right now. Cannabis sativa or hemp seed oil is really rich in amino acids, so it's very hydrating on the skin, but it's also very lightweight. So if you have more oily skin, you can probably still use these. And because I generally like to layer oil on top of my moisturizer at night, I like that these are lightweight just because it doesn't add too much to my skin and they really absorb quickly, which is nice. And I have to say my favorite one is this one from Herbivore. This is the Emerald Oil. This one is such a nice oil. It's beautiful. It's so hydrating on my skin. It has really great ingredients as well. The first ingredient is squalene derived from olive and then the second ingredient is the cannabis sativa seed oil so it's very high in that main ingredient it just makes my skin look so glowy and so healthy i've even used this during the day before makeup or i've mixed in a drop with foundation and it really just helps it to wear nicer especially when it's so dry outside and then this one from first day beauty which they sent to me this is the ultra repair cannabis and oat dry oil this one is a little bit lighter weight so if you have more oily skin you might prefer the texture of this one to this one not that this is a thick oil by any means but this one is even thinner it's more of like that dry touch oil so it soaks in really really quickly and I also found that cannabis is pretty high up on the list of ingredients with this one as well the first ingredient is actually jojoba oil which is most of the formula 
followed by um, colloidal oatmeal, which is really soothing and nourishing, especially if you're prone to like redness and eczema, it's very calming and soothing on the skin. And then cannabis sativa seed oil is actually the fourth ingredient in here. So it's still pretty high up on the list. So I do really like this one as well. And I think I'll probably get more use out of this one in the summer. I think this one is just slightly more hydrating on my really dry skin right now. But I think once the weather warms up and I'm not needing like that super rich moisture, I'm really gonna love this one as well. Um, the other one I wanna talk about is the Makeup Revolution CBD oil. Now this one is really, really affordable. It's $14 compared to the other two, it's actually a bargain. And I tried this a few times kind of in between when I was using these other ones. And those days I just didn't feel like I got the same sort of results out of my skin. It just didn't look quite as glowy. It didn't feel quite as hydrated. And then I went to go look at the ingredients and I could not believe when I saw the ingredients. I love Makeup Revolution, but they're calling this CBD oil and it's the very last ingredient on the ingredient list. Um, I can read them for you right here. The very first ingredient is fractionated coconut oil, which is listed as caprylic capric triglycerides. Next is grapeseed oil, sweet almond oil, sunflower seed oil, coconut oil, and then cannabis sativa hemp seed oil, very last. So if you're buying this oil for the cannabis sativa, the hemp seed benefits, it's like a tiny fraction of the formula compared to everything else that's in here. And I'm not trying to say that grapeseed and sweet almond oil and sunflower seed oil, they're not good for your skin because they are. But I just wanted to let you know that if you're buying this specifically for the hemp seed oil or the cannabis sativa seed oil, it's hardly in here at all. So if you want something that has more of that in it, I would definitely go with one of these two. This one having the most and then this one coming in second, this one is last. I also wanna mention a few moisturizers I've been trying recently. The first one is the Star Skin Organic Pink Cactus Pudding. I have mentioned this a few times. I think I talked about it in my skincare favorites at the end of the year. I love this stuff so much. It's the most hydrating moisturizer and I've been using it like crazy. I'm about halfway through the jar now, but it has this crazy like kind of pudding like texture. It's almost like a solid. And then when you apply it to your skin, it's like the most nourishing, most hydrating stuff on the planet. It just comforts my dry skin. My skin can be at its absolute driest. I put this on and it's just like relief. It feels so good. It's very buttery, very rich, and very heavy. So if you don't have extremely dry skin, you may find this to be a little too much for you, but I absolutely love it. It's been a lifesaver this winter. It also smells amazing. It has kind of like this really comforting, almost like lavender type scent. It's just so good at bedtime. I've also though, if this is not in your budget, because it is a little on the pricey side, I've also been loving the Pixie Rose Ceramide Cream. This has almost that same texture. It is super thick and rich, and it actually reminds me a lot of the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Cream. This is just, again, very rich, very buttery, very heavy on the skin, but I found that even in the daytime, I can use this one, and makeup goes on really, really nicely over it. I use it at night as well. Sometimes I'll switch in between this one and the Star Skin, and it's just like the nicest, most comforting moisturizer for dry skin. Ceramides do help to restore your skin's barrier. So when you have dry skin and that's a little bit more compromised, this is again, just a lifesaver for dry skin. And I do own the Ceramiding Cream from Dr. Jart. I bought this back in the early fall during the Sephora VIB sale. And I loved it so much. I thought this is an incredible moisturizer, but for some reason, if I use it more than one day in a row, it makes me break out. This one doesn't though, and they're very, very similar in texture and the way they feel on the skin. So I really haven't touched this in a long time because I'm afraid of breaking out again, but luckily this one has not done that to me. So very, very impressed with this and definitely would recommend you checking it out if you have really dry skin. And one moisturizer that did not work out for me is this Ultra Repair Berry Air Cream from First Aid Beauty. I thought I was going to absolutely love this. It has this unique kind of fluffy, whipped texture. It feels really, really nice going on. It's very thick, but then it kind of dries to more of a like velvety finish. It's really, really nice. I wish I loved it, but unfortunately this made me break out and I almost never break out. So I always know when I'm trying a new product for a few days and then I start to break out. And at first I wasn't positive that it was this because there's not really any comedogenic type ingredients in here, but once I started reading the reviews at Sephora, a lot of people said the same thing. And I also felt like this dried out my skin. It does have hyaluronic acid in it, so that could be the reason. I think the um, second ingredient, let me just look at the list, 
The third ingredient is glycerin, which is also a humectant. So that does the same thing as the hyaluronic acid where it's pulling water from the air. So I'm guessing that might be the reason why this made my skin feel extra dry after a while. When you first put it on, it feels very hydrating, but it was like after about an hour, my skin just felt dry and tight. So between feeling dry and the breakouts, I just did not enjoy this product, sadly, but I really wanted to love it. They had also sent me this retinol eye cream, and it's not a bad eye cream by any means. I just didn't notice it doing anything. I didn't notice any type of improvement in my eye area. I used it for probably three, almost four weeks straight, which I know when you're using retinol, you really need to use it for a long time to wait and see if you see results, but I just didn't notice any improvement whatsoever, not even a slight little amount. And I probably just need to use it a little bit longer because retinol does take a while to start working and start seeing results. But this is also a hyaluronic acid based product and I just didn't feel like it moisturized and hydrated as much as some of my other eye creams. I like something really super thick and rich in that area and this was just a little bit too lightweight for me. And then next I have to mention this Alginus Genius Sleeping Collagen Cream. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Alginus products. Every time I use one, I find that I just get the best results from it. I don't know if it's their Algeronic Acid, which is their patented ingredient. It just really seems to help my skin look so much smoother and minimize those fine lines. And I don't know if it's truly getting rid of fine lines or if it's just kind of a temporary thing, like as you're using it, they look less apparent. But either way, I love the way my skin looks when I use this. And this one is a super thick, rich, buttery cream. You almost have to scoop it out. It's kind of almost a solid form, like the um, pink cactus pudding. Um, and then it just like melts into your skin and turns into this like rich, creamy, buttery goodness. And the scent of it is so beautiful. It reminds me of this like kind of lavender vanilla stuff that I used to put on my son before bed to help him sleep when he was a baby. It's just like the softest scent you can barely smell it. If you don't really like scented products, you're not gonna smell it for very long. I only smell it when I'm first putting it on, but it's just a really soothing and comforting scent. Overall, it's just a really beautiful moisturizer. If you have aging skin or dry skin, it just makes your skin look so much better when you wake up in the morning. So that's the reason that I love it. Is it doing anything long-term? I don't know. All I know is that I just love the way my skin looks when I wear this. It just plumps everything up, minimizes the fine lines. My skin looks so glowy and dewy in the morning. So for me, that is good enough. And then a few nights a week in place of the Genius Sleeping Cream, I was using the Glam Glow Good In Bed Treatment. This one is a triple exfoliating treatment. So it has AHA, BHA, and PHA in here. It claims to deeply nourish your skin while it exfoliates overnight. So I just thought it would be a nice treatment in between using this. But unfortunately, I didn't really see a lot of results from this. I expected to wake up in the morning and have really smooth skin. Like this has so many fruit acids in here. It has glycolic acid, tartaric, lactic acid, salicylic acid to get down into the pores. That's the BHA. I was expecting my skin to look so smooth and bright when I woke up in the morning and I really didn't notice much when I woke up. I didn't find that my skin felt as soft as it does when I use this and it also just didn't look like it, it had been exfoliated at all. So I was a little bit disappointed in that. It also has like this kind of passion fruit scent to it that I'm not too crazy about. It's a little strong. And I also found that the texture of this tends to pill up. When I'm applying it to my skin, it just starts to roll into those little balls. I feel like it's sitting on top rather than really penetrating. And to be honest with you, I haven't had the best luck with Glam Glow products in the past. So I don't know why I purchased this, but I guess just because of all the really good ingredients that are in here, I was hoping it would do a little bit more, but it really kind of was disappointing. But what I have really been enjoying, and I've only had this about a week and a half, but it's kind of supposed to do the same sort of thing. This is the Black Sugar Perfect Reset Cream from Skin Food. And this one actually does what I was hoping the Glam Glow would do. It just makes my skin look so much smoother when I wake up. This one also has chemical exfoliants in it, but it's really, really gentle. It's super hydrating on my skin. And when I wake up, my skin actually does look smoother and it gets rid of the flakiness. I just find that it does a much, much better job. So I am enjoying this one. If you're looking for a nighttime treatment that'll really gently exfoliate the top layer of your skin while providing a ton of hydration, check this one out. This one does also have a scent. It's like a lemon sugar type scent, but I prefer it definitely to the fruity one that that one has. So I've rarely been let down by Skin Foods products and this one is no exception. I think this one is really, really good. 
Okay guys, so that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, definitely don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. I do reviews throughout the week and hauls every single Sunday. So thank you all so much for watching.